The country's high court will get another stab at Obamacare in the case of King v. Burwell that the justices will hear this coming Wednesday. Exactly. More than six million of them get insurance on one of the 34 exchanges that the federal government operates in those states that would not or could not set up their own exchanges. But this lawsuit that the Supreme Court is about to hear claims that those six million plus subsidies are actually illegal. The plaintiffs argue that the federal subsidies were never meant to apply to the federally run exchanges. They quote the text of the ACA that the subsidies would apply to exchanges, quote, established by the state. And the White House says that language actually encompasses all of the exchanges and that Congress clearly intended the subsidies to apply to both federal and state run exchanges. So what happens if the subsidies are struck down? Well, according to the Obama administration, it would be unavoidably catastrophic. As Health and Human Services Secretary Sylvia Burwell said in a letter to Congress this week, we know of no administrative actions that could, and therefore we have no plans that would undo the massive damage to our health care system that would be caused by an adverse decision. What does that damage look like? According to a study by the RAND Corporation, 9.6 million people would lose their insurance in states with federal exchanges, and premiums in those states would increase by 40 percent. Still with me is Congressman Gregory Meeks, and is joined at the table by Ovik Roy, who's senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute, Akhil Reed Amar, who is professor of law at Yale University, and Amy Goodman, host and executive producer of Democracy Now. So, Ovik, under these circumstances, really, is, is this anything more than a kind of attempt to undo a law that has been, that clearly has been a partisan dividing line, but using a legal framework that isn't really about law, that's really about partisanship. Well, you know, I would actually disagree with some of the, the factual things that Akhil said. So I've actually been writing about this issue in the law since at least 2011, because the legal language was there, and the legal language is spelled out. In fact, the Congressional Budget Office actually was the Joint Committee on Taxation, the JCT. They did not model the subsidies based on a federal exchange. They assumed that every state would implement the ACA as a was written. It wasn't until the Obama through the Internal Revenue Service, they issued a rule saying subsidies could flow through the federal exchange. That then the CBO said, well, the administration is saying that these subsidies can flow, so we're going to model it that way too. Uh, so, so I think one thing that's important to understand is that if the Supreme Court sides with the challengers in this case. They will not be changing one word of the ACA, not one period, not one semicolon. All they will be saying is that the IRS didn't have the authority to, to flow those funds through the federal exchange. But they were. This week at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, presidential hopefuls made sure to express, once again, their total opposition to Obamacare. Here's Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal talking about his Republican colleagues in Congress. They're about to wave the white flag of surrender on repealing Obamacare. And I'm here to tell you, we've got to tell them we won't stand for that. Governor Jindal is feeling betrayed by congressional Republicans for not doing more to repeal the ACA. I'll let him explain why. You've got Republicans in Washington telling us the way to count success is not by reducing costs, but not by empowering patients, but rather by counting how many people have insurance cards whether they've got meaningful access to affordable care or access to the doctors they want in their network. You know, I think it's so interesting. I mean, Bobby Jindal uh, actually called me a fake conservative in Politico <laughs> and a few other people, Republican health reformers, uh, because he's making this argument mm. that we should actually, it's a good thing to disrupt health coverage for the people who yeah. have gotten it through the law, which makes absolutely no sense mm -hmm. to most of us, even on the right, who talk about mm -hmm. advancing coverage for these individuals. Mm -hmm. So Jindal is actually take, is taking, is taking a position yeah. that's quite different than the one that's kind of a mainstream conservative position on health reform today. Yeah, and, and, and it's, I, I guess that's part of what I find surprising is that to take that position, to take it in a state where people are benefiting. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of partisan discourse around this, but in a very real way, especially without the Medicaid expansion, the idea of, of of snatching subsidies in a state as poor and, by the way, as unhealthy as right sort of the the health outcomes in Louisiana, and never mind that there is an economic benefit to this for the building of hospitals and the reimbursement of like it just seems strikingly against one's own and, economic interests. And here's what would happen if the plaintiffs in that King versus Burwell case were to win, then actually states that aren't setting up their own exchanges would be leaving.
billions of dollars of aid to their uh, to, to their patients and mm -hmm. to their, their, their constituents and the hospitals yeah, and the on doctors the table. on the table. Which and is, and boy, why they're going to do it. And which is why they set it up that way. So be careful what you well Democrats be careful what you wish for because this is actually going to put a lot of pressure on Bobby Jindal and mm -hmm. and the governor of Texas of Florida to start playing ball with, with this. Is a Republican president actually the best way to protect ACA? In other words, if this is just a continuous political matter, would Republicans in the House and Senate let it go? I mean. Yeah. In other words, the other alternative is a Democratic House and Senate. But without that, let's, is the only way to make this go away, to have a Republican president. Let me make an analogy to <laughs> Iraq and the post-9-11 terrorist hmm. consensus. So President Obama, much to the frustration of a lot of people on the left, has actually continued a lot of the Bush era initiatives around 9-11 and terrorism yeah. and, and things like that. This is actually a fairly similar situation. If Republican governors have to implement exchanges because otherwise they'll lose the money, if a Republican president has to contend with the issue, how do we maintain coverage for people, that's going to create a lot of buy-in, ironically, for a law that up to this point has been quite partisanly uh, debated. Yeah.